Who inspires you? You know, it's funny. I've been inspired by lots of, I mean, inspiration is my business, right? So, oh, like from Maya Angelou and the Oprah Winfrey Show, like all that stuff, like all of us. But there's only ever been one person that like inspired me to literally change my life. And that's when I was so depressed. I'd won the Olympics, cover of time, line of clothing at a national now, department That doesn't store. sound like depression. I mean, it doesn't sound like, like you wouldn't project somebody's going to be in a depressed zone I and they're know. feeling depressed when they won that, when they achieved that. I mean, so I'm curious about that, but sorry. I was one of the first athletes to speak about that post-Olympic depression. So even without being gay, there's a feeling of, okay, I've reached my dream. Uh, now what? Right? This really strange feeling. Then you layer on, I'm closeted, I'm gay, people think I'm this, I'm not. Like there was this cycle in my head that just... And did it go dark for you? Like were you... It went really dark. Yeah, it went really dark. I for sure, for a while in my life I was suicidal. I can't remember that anymore because it's so far away. I just didn't see any way out. I just felt like I, I, you know, I was the opposite of expanding my perspective. I was so here, I couldn't see until I went to see this premiere of what's love got to do with it with Tina Turner. And I literally sat there and I cried from the opening scene until the closing credit. And when she left Ike for nothing but her name, it, it just became my, I was like, I used to go, I Tina, <laughs> that was my mantra. I was like, I Tina. And I decided to leave everything at the height of my fame in 1994 bought a one-way ticket to Australia and immigrated with nothing but my name and started over. So that's, so I would say Tina Turner is the, is the ultimate inspiration for me. I just watched her, her documentary that's on one of the, the streaming channels lately and I, I bawled watching it again. Like her story just is so touching. Wow. Because I mean, what's so fascinating about your story is that 1992, win this gold medal, but you're saying that was the start. Most mm -hmm. people, I mean, that's the that's the pinnacle. I mean, that's the summit. And you were saying that's just the start. And I wonder how that mindset has just served you. What can I control? What can I control? Mm -hmm. Plan for this. And just taking that fundamental high of high performance traits and just keep applying them all through life. And that's what I love. I feel blessed that I got that experience so early, but also that um, Debbie and I were able to articulate it and teach it. So I not only live it, I'm torn between living it and teaching it, but that's the beauty. And I love to see other people bring it to life. Mm. And, and funny when you see other people live your stuff, they teach it back, mm. right? They interpret it different ways. I'm like, oh, I never thought of that idea from that point of view. It's really fun. And I'm curious. So innovation was one of your traits, but I didn't hear bravery. And I feel like, again, when I think about 1998, there's probably a lot of brave moments in your life. I feel like, like that is freak. Great. Yeah, so a leader trait that we have is show conviction. Okay. And and I'd say the achiever equivalent is go the distance. That's where you need to be courageous and not give up. But show conviction is where you really believe in something fundamentally to your core. And I just, I, I knew that I, I believed and I had to do what I had to do at that time mm -hmm. when I came out. I was willing to lose everything. I think that was really interesting. What I didn't think about was all that I would gain. This feeling of self-peace and harmony and authenticity that people found really attractive. You know, different people at first. It wasn't maybe your typical corporate world, but work always came. And then it started to become, you know, be because I was kind of a pioneer, talking about this in 1998, yeah. looked incredibly brave in 2008, when suddenly the corporate world started to yeah. talk much more about diversity and equity and inclusion. Yeah. And even to this day, that those conversations still today. Still I mean, coming. And in sport, it's, it's still, still absolutely. Yeah, but there's, there's a couple generations now. That's what I love. I've got like kids that are 16 or 18 today saying, thank you, Mark. And I feel like a proud grandparent. It's like, wow, that was so worth doing. It was hard at the time, but it paid dividends. So if you think about that, that young person who, whether they're an athlete or they're just in that spot, uh, I'm, I'm showing one thing to the world and it doesn't feel authentic. Like, what do you ask? What do you, what do you say to that person? I mean, what's your, how do you help somebody in that spot? So, you know, one of the most important leadership traits, I think, is to be open to be like kind of able to do what's right in any situation, to be agile 
To do that, to start to be able to do that, you have to obviously be able to take a step in other people's shoes, have some empathy. So I always, when somebody's struggling, like first of all, I remember being there. Everyone's got their own time frame, their own journey. I do what I can and try to support, but I'm never judgmental. You know, I think that it's a, such a unique personal thing. I know people still that are maybe what we would think are superstar athletes, still not comfortable to talk about that part of their lives. And that's fair. You know, they've had to probably take on so many fights in other places. Mm. I took that one on. I'll take that one for the team. But um, yeah, I'll do whatever I can to help people for sure. There's no there's no one thing to tell someone. Mm. That's, I guess, my mm. answer, right? It's It's listening. It's figuring out the circumstance and then offering whatever support I can. I've had some instances that were so adorable that it was like, I was Debbie, like when I came out to Debbie, Debbie did this thing and then I've been in that situation. I'm like, oh my God, I'm Debbie now. As this athlete's coming out yeah, to me, yeah. like I can't believe yeah. like this is the cycle of life. Yeah, and I think, you know, for those who watch this, we've got people who watch all around the world, they're not gonna win a gold medal in swimming. I mean, that's just not their, their trajectory, but they use their voice to create change. I mean, there'd probably be a lot of people who are saying like, that's me, I don't know where to start. What would you say to that person who wants to have an impact with their voice mm -hmm. authentically? What would you say to that person? You know, it, activism, I think we can think it, it's huge and organizing a march or being part of something, a movement, and it can be that. It can also be speaking up for a, a wrong that you be, speaking up for somebody, being an ally for somebody that you know maybe can't find their voice, but you can help speak for them. Showing goodwill, you know, treating maybe that person that you see homeless as a human being and taking a minute to look in their eyes and show some empathy. Find something that you care about and give $20 a month. Volunteer if you have no money for something that you care about. All of these things are just three times a week, half an hour, an hour. Go be a coach at Special Olympics. Or like, there's so many things we can do. And I just started doing those little things. And then amazingly, over 35 years, all of those accumulate, accumulate into some pretty big accomplishments. But it didn't start that way. It just started from speaking out and you know, doing little acts of kindness. And so that's what I remind people mm -hmm. about that want to make a difference. I think sometimes people wait to find the thing or the moment and it you just gotta start. I mean, it sounds like those those like small steps on the humanitarian side scale, just like they do on the performance side. We were talking about, you know, there was just things we did and we kept doing them and then something happened. The incremental, incremental. So I wanna share something from that. You know, there's an idea that Debbie gave me, my coach, that was so fundamental to being a high performer. You can't be a high performer, you can't accomplish, you can't be your best if you're afraid to try new things or do things differently or make a mistake, because you have to fail. And I came from a very like command and control, win or lose, succeed or fail, all or nothing, black and white, because it was timed. Debbie came from synchronized swimming, very nuanced. Synchronized swimming, you know, eight women start together not in sync and over here incrementally they find their way to perfection it's never going to start perfect but they'll get there and so the very first time i worked out with debbie this horrible thing happened she tied a 10 pound or a 10 pound weight plunked me into the deep end of the pool oh God, i was like a dolphin she did not that i couldn't do it and you know i i nothing happened the lifeguard was there and i undid the band and made it up and gasped for air when as i was running out and she was like okay <laughs> you're even worse than i thought but this is a great thing she said i thought you had a starting point you didn't have mark there's no failure only feedback we only fail if we don't listen to the feedback so now we got the feedback now we're gonna revise according to that and take our next step she called it the aer principle act evaluate revise she said as long as we do that this year we can't we, we will be fine and that's how I dropped 1.2 seconds. It was from trying and incremental and adapting and every day being open to the next step. If I'd waited to find the perfect path, I would have never got there. I would have got to the Olympics, so I'm exactly the same time and wondered why I couldn't figure it out. So it was magical. And I think that that attitude has given me the courage to try things and sure, I'll make a mistake, but I'm, I can live with it. One of our traits is have humility, you know, admit your mistakes and move on. And, I think it's healthy. It's healthy to kind of every once in a while misstep and have to reevaluate. Mm.
So all this wisdom you've been accumulating for years of doing all sorts of things at a high level, I'm going to ask the question that every 20 year old is wanting me to ask right now. What would you have told yourself at 20 years old? What's your advice to 20 year olds? <laughs> oh, to 20 year olds. Oh my God. To myself, funny that you, like when I think of when I was 20, it was like, maybe all 20 year olds will go through it. It's a, it's a difficult time. I was kind of becoming a man growing up here on a teenager. I had my first Olympics. I felt like it wasn't as how it went as it didn't go as I wanted. I had a silver medal, but I felt like I was kind of the weakest part on a team that got pulled to it. Um, ben Johnson versus Carl Lewis was like the biggest race in the history of the world until the Olympics, 1988 Seoul. Ben Johnson, the Canadian, won, beat Carl Lewis, the American, and then got po tested positive for steroids. And so there was this dark cloud over the Olympics. I remember coming back to Canada and Thankfully, I took a like weekend-long Toastmasters class that somebody wanted me to take through the Alberta Sport Council. And I wasn't that good, honest to God, but I then started to speak to school kids. I spoke to 60,000 kids for free. And I shared the Olympic story and, and I talked myself back into swimming. So I would tell 20-year-old Mark, start talking and share your story because it's going to change your life. I don't think that's what every 20 year old needs to hear, but for some reason, what was about to happen was exactly what I needed. Mm. So every 20 year old, I don't know. I mean, I think it's really important if you're thinking about leadership, you know, it starts by leading yourself. And that's probably an age where we're able to take responsibility, where we maybe have a framework of somebody, a coach or a teacher or someone helping us figure out the decisions we should make. But I think around 20 is the time where you take the lead in your own life, decide the goal for yourself, hold yourself accountable, build the support team that you need around you, and start to figure out what it is to lead.